Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Uh, thanks for joining us for uh, Sailor Academy's ESL 001. Um, uh, this week, we're going to be touching on Unit uh, 2 again. Uh, sorry, <laughs> we're doing Part 2 of Unit 4, so this is a, a review. Um, if you haven't seen any of the previous ones, feel free to check them out in the playlist below. Um, and, of course, you can check out the course at uh, sailor.org. Uh, you can also uh, join the discourse discussion forums, which will be linked uh, below and probably in the chat. And, of course, feel free to answer uh, questions in the chat. We have an eye on that um, over here. But uh, without further ado, we will um, we'll get started with our review. And uh, Chrissy, you can take it away here whenever you'd like. Thank you, Mike. Welcome, everyone, uh, to the newest edition of ESL 001. So we're going to start with the warm-up activity. Um, in ESL 001, we practice describing our daily routine. Look at the scrambled words and phrases below. What daily routines can you see? Once you know the word or phrase, can you use it in a sentence about your day? So this is just a, a quick activity to get you thinking along the lines of, um, you know, unscrambling the words and, and um, you know, considering that how they would apply to your uh, daily routine. So take, just take a moment. We'll, we'll go over these in just a, a couple of minutes. All right, um, and we're back. Um, great job, uh, people in the chat. Uh, a lot of people, you know, uh, they got you know, uh, get dressed here. We have um, uh, we have uh, a lot of people for number six putting down uh, relax. Uh, number four, exercise. Um, right here, um, Annabelle uh, for number three, making dinner. 
lot of lot of good answers here. So Chris, why don't we why don't we uh, drum roll and let everyone uh, know? <laughs> Great job, everyone! Uh, thanks for putting your answers in the uh, chat area, uh, and we'll just go through these quickly. Uh, for the first one, it should be get dressed. It was kind of weird the way that you know when you're looking at the words to try and decipher them, but um, get dressed. So I get dressed after I take a shower. Start work. Uh, I start work at 9 a.m. Uh, make dinner. Every day I make dinner for my family. Uh, exercise. I try to exercise most days of the week. Study. After work, I study English for an hour. And relax. I relax before going to bed. Sometimes I watch a movie and sometimes I read a book. So you can, you can uh, hopefully get uh, a lot of these from just taking a look and, and um, deciphering them and, and thinking about how they fit into your daily routine. So excellent work, all of you who are able to get some of those answers in there. Um, in last week's session, we talked about chronological order. And remember, this means um, stories, uh, is the events, I'm sorry, stories happen in order from the very first thing to the last thing. So, for example, if a woman in a story wants to prepare for an exam, she will first go to class, then study, and then finally take the exam. So this kind of keeps everything focused and easily understood, um, and it's just one way that, that we're able to kind of keep our ideas in order. Um, think about what you already know. For example, in Unit 4, you are asked to write about your daily routine. You already know how most people order their day. They wake up, eat, breakfast, go to work or school, and so on. Um, by activating or thinking about your background knowledge, you can better understand the chronological order in your reading. So you want to think about your own uh, situation and what you know as you're kind of reading to help you um, certainly draw that into it and help you better understand it, basically. Uh, revising and editing are important stages of the writing process. Uh, so revising, you add, remove, or change information in order to improve the content. So these are the, the ideas, basically. And editing is taking another look at the words and sentences that you use to express your ideas and fixing any problems in grammar, punctuation, and sentence structure. So both of these things work together once the ideas and once the actual sentences, um, punctuation, you know, changing words here and there to make, make it clearer and make it better. Okay. Um, for the revision checklist here, uh, you can actually add more to this that would, would work for you, uh, but this is just a way to kind of think about your own. Uh, situation and uh, when you're completing an assignment. So did you successfully meet the assignment requirements? A lot of people have difficulty um, following that. So in other words, sometimes we get, we're in a rush, we overlook uh, an assignment um, directions and, and we do something entirely different. So we want to make sure that we are checking that. We want to make sure that we follow the directions, uh, you know, as, as we should. Did you use transition words between sentences and or paragraphs correctly? So you want to think about how are you linking your ideas? You know, in English, we like to link from one um, idea to the next by using uh, transition words like um, first or second or third. In addition, words like that will help you as you kind of move through and are blending your ideas together. And then are the ideas presented in a logical order? So that's what you want to check too. I think that that's probably one of the areas where we do the most revising because maybe we'll put something out of order or we'll put something in our writing that doesn't make sense because it's too, you know, it's too far in the beginning or it should be at the end. Uh, so you want to check that. Um, and for the editing checklist, so here's a way for you to do uh, some editing of your own work. A lot of you also, I think, talk about using Grammarly. 
and that's G R A M M A R L Y dot com. And that is a great resource for editing. Um, but but it does check things like this. It checks did you capitalize the first word of every sentence? Did you end each sentence with the correct end point? Uh, punctuation, excuse me. Um, does every verb agree with its subject? Um, is every verb in the correct tense? Is every word spelled correctly? Um, and then read the sentences aloud. Do they sound correct? Is anything missing? Sometimes when you read your own writing, you can, ca you can catch where you're making those mistakes. So if you're uh, missing a word or if you need call somewhere or if something you know you chose the wrong word you, you'll be able to see that when you're reading your work aloud so it's a good way to get you thinking along the lines of you know how can I um, catch those little things that I'm doing that really make my writing less than it could be and these are all things that if we put them together will help us you know uh, become better writers and better communicators just these little steps add up to a lot. So reading aloud gives you the opportunity to both see and hear what you have written. Um, so it slows you down and you'll, you're more able to catch those errors. Usually when we read silently, we fill in the gap. So if there's a word missing, our, our mind is, is great at that. We'll go back and, and kind of fill that in. But when you read aloud, you know, you're focusing on exactly what you're seeing, which helps you capture any errors. So we're going to now kind of bring this into a practice activity, see how well you do here. Um, here are some sentences describing meet those daily routines. Put the sentences in the correct order. So what I'd like you to do is read through these sentences. Um, you're thinking chronologically, so you want to think about what's First thing that Miko does in the morning, what's the second, um, and then how does how does the uh, day end basically? So take some time. I'll give you a couple minutes to work on this, and then we'll go over it and we'll talk about how all this fits together.
Hi there, uh, everyone. Great, great job. Lots of great answers. Everyone uh, caught our B and H uh, little Easter egg there. So double kudos, good on, <laughs> good for you guys. That wasn't a mistake or anything. But uh, Chris, I want you to run everyone through um, through the answers. Good job, everyone in the chat well, with your answers. Yeah, thank you, everyone, for taking the time to participate. You'll see at the bottom the letters are in the order they would be in. Now remember, B and H were the same thing, so not to be tricky or anything it was just something to see if you know try to catch your attention there and, and get you thinking about that but you can see this is um in chronological order because we have uh the first sentence is talking about waking up at 7 30 uh getting up and feeding the dogs and then getting ready for school washing um the person's face having breakfast brushing teeth and getting dressed um, and then, of course, classes start from 8.30 to 3.30. After school, uh, this person exercises, does homework, and texts with his, his or her friend, um, then has dinner, finishes homework, and watches TV. And then at the very end, it talks about, you know, the days are never exactly the same, but this is basically what is done. Um, on the weekdays. So you can see it starts from the morning and goes until the evening. Uh, so if, if you got this, great. Thank you for putting your answers in there. And hopefully um, this, this gives you some ideas about how we can, you know, put chronological order into practice. All right, so we have another practice activity for you. Uh, read the daily routines described below. How could the students improve their writing? Can you fix and identify their errors? So this is going to just be a quick check to see if you can spot any errors in the writing um, that the you know that these sample students have shared, and then we're going to go over and discuss what kind of errors they are and how to fix them. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to do that.
All right. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. A lot of a lot of great uh, work in the chat. A lot of people know the difference between uh, uh, teeth and tooth, it would seem. Um, but uh, Chris, I want you to uh, uh, take it away here. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for participating. Let's go over a few of the uh, errors here. So you see in, the, in number one, um, instead of the little I, okay, you can make it the big I. Okay, and then you would instead of toke, you're going to put took to match with woke. So this, of course, is the past tense. It's something that happened already. Um, and then in the beginning of the next sentence, you have I. You want to put a period at the end of shower. Okay. Um, you want to uh, change the little I to the big I there. Change and here, then, and you want to make relax, relax, make it the past tense, um, and you period at the end of little, capital A there, comma there, because um, that's a phrase, and then we have another uh, I here, so whenever you're referring to I as in yourself in the sentence, you always want to capitalize that. In the second one, um, we have, we want to take out alarms because most people just have one alarm, you know, that rings, it wakes them up every morning. Uh, you want to make this an I here, um, a, a period here because it's talking about um, some activities that are happening. So I go to the bathroom, comma, and then I brush my teeth. So you have the capital I here. You want to change tooth because that means just one tooth, one thing in your mouth, the teeth, which means all of uh, the teeth, all the tooth. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, now I'm getting confused. All the teeth in your mouth. Um, and then you want to, of course, put a period after that. You want to create I there, capital I, because that's, of course, the start of a sentence and you're referring to yourself there. Okay. Um, and then you want to use I throughout the rest of the, the sentence here. Uh, PJs, okay, which means pajamas. You can, you know, certainly um, capitalize that. And instead of eat, you want to put eat. Uh, again, teeth instead of tooth. And then you want to use a comma and put and in there. Okay, we, we want to use and at the end of a series of things that you're doing uh, to show that that's, you know, well, just to, just to kind of bring it together and, and, you know, unify the sentence and also to show, of course, that it is the, the last thing in that uh, selection that, that you're writing about. So if you take a quick look at this and compare it with your own work, you should be able to see uh, you know, what are some of your common errors and how you can work on fixing them. I always like to do these activities because it helps me better understand, you know, what mistakes am I making that are consistent and how can I change them. So hopefully you learned a little bit about, you know, some of those common mistakes uh, that we that we make and how to fix them. And what I'd like to do is just offer you time for any questions um, or uh, if you had any, any comments on any of the activities, you can certainly take your time and put them in the chat box. Next week will be the final session for um, the first part of, um, well, it'll be a complete review of the course. That's right, and so that'll be the uh, same time uh, yeah. next next week. Uh, so I hope you all can join us um, again. If you have any questions right now, we'll do. We'll hang out here for a couple minutes, see if anyone has anything in the chat. But again, um, if you've missed any of the previous videos, you can check out uh, the playlist linked below. Um, of course, check out um, English as a Second Language uh, 001 uh, from Sailor Academy at sailor.org. And you can also continue the conversation about the course in our discourse discussion forums, um, which will also be linked below. Um, 
Again, I just want to thank everyone uh, for joining us uh, uh, here today. And um, we'll just give everyone um, another uh, uh, minute here to see if they have some questions. And, uh, <coughs> and then, uh, yeah, we'll be back here next week for an, an overview of uh, basically the entire course. So thank you, everyone. Um, and uh, we'll see you again next time. Yes, thank you for participating and being a part of this. It's great to see you all.